Today we are going to be learning about factors and multiples. We're going to start off talking about factors. Factors are numbers that will divide into a given number evenly without leaving any remainder. So we're going to start off with an example where we're going to list all the factors of the number 12. So for the number 12, we want to find out what numbers go into 12. So first of all, any time you're trying to find the factors of a number, the first factor will always be the number 1. So I can start off by working with 1. And if I take 12 and I divide it by 1, I will get 12. So I could also write it as 12 is the same as 1 multiplied by 12. This is what we call a factor pair. Both of these are factors because they both go into the number 12. And when I multiply them together, they will give me 12. Now let's have a look at the next number after 1, which is 2. If 2 goes into 12, then it is also going to be a factor. So 2 does go into 12. If I divide 12 by 2, I get 6. So my next factor pair is 2 and 6. If I multiply 2 by 6, I get 12. My next number after 2 is 3. And if I divide 12 by 3, it also works, which means that 3 is also a factor. And when I divide 12 by 3, I get 4. So I could also write 3 multiplied by 4 is equal to 12. And then my next number after 3 is 4, which I've already got over here. So now I can stop because I've got all of my, um, the start of all my factor pairs. So now I'm going to go and write down all of my factors of 12 in numerical order. So I start with a 1 over there. Then I've got my 2 and my 3 and then I have 4 over here and then 6 and then 12. Now I could have gone straight to this line over here without having to write down all of that first and the way that I can do that is by starting off with my 1 because remember we said that the first factor of any number will always be 1 so I start with 1 and the other half of that factor pair will be the same as the number that you're starting with. So in this case, it is 12. So I'm going to write my 12 over here because 12 divided by 1 will give me 12. OK, so then I'm going to go and put my next one, which after 1, the next number that I'm going to check is 2. If 2 goes into 12, I'm going to write it down. In this case, it does. And the number of times the 2 goes into 12 is 6. So I'm going to write a 6 before the 12 over there. So here's my second factor pair. And remember, I'm writing them down as a factor pair. OK, so 2 and 6. And then my next one after 2 is 3. And when I divide 12 by 3, I get 4. So I'm going to write down the other half of my factor pair over there, which is 4. And then you can see that the 3 and the 4 are right next to each other like that. So I don't need to now do any more because I have gone as far as I can. but uh, writing down the, um, all of my factor pairs. So you can go straight to this answer without having to go and do all of that working first. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a chance to do some on your own. You're going to work on three questions and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this.
okay you should hopefully be done with that by now so we're going to go through those answers so the first one was the factors of 15 so for question a we're going to find the factors of 15 now remember we said that the first factor of any number will always be 1 so I'm going to start by writing down that 1 and the last factor will always be the same as the number itself so in this case it's going to be 15 so I'm going to write down my 15 over there as well leaving some space in between for the factors that I still need to write down okay now the next number I'm going to check is 2 now 2 doesn't go into 15 so I'm going to skip it and go on to the next one which is 3 3 does go into 15 okay so I'm going to write down my 3 now if I divide 15 by 3, I will end up with 5. So I'm going to write down 5 over here. Now between 3 and 5, there's only one number left that I need to check, and that is 4. 4 doesn't go into 15, which means that it's not a factor, so I'm not going to be writing it down. And so that means I've written down all of my factors now. My factor pairs are 1 and 15, and 3 and 5. Right, so that was question A. Question B, we had 48. Okay, so for, for 48, we're again going to start with 1. I'm going to leave some more space for myself this time because it's a bigger number and I know there are going to be more factors. So I'm going to write the 48 over here as my last factor. Remember, our last factor will always be the same as the number that we're working with. Okay, now 48, if I divide it by 2, it does work. So 2 is going to be my next factor over here. When I divide 48 by 2, I end up with 24. So I'm going to write 24 as my factor over there then the next number I'm going to check is 3 now if I divide 48 by 3 it does also work and that leaves me with 16 so I'm going to put 3 over here and I'm going to have 16 over there now after 3 comes 4 if I check 48 divided by 4 I will find that I get 12 so 4 is also a factor and the rest the other half of the factor pair is 12 then if I try the next number after 4 is 5 and 5 does not go into 48 so I'm going to skip over it and then I'm going to go on to 6. Now 48 divided by 6 will give me 8 so I'm going to put 6 over here and 8 over there. Now you can see that I'm running out of space but that's not really a problem because the only number that I have left to check is 7 and 7 doesn't go into 48 so I've got all of my factors for 48 over there. Then the last one that we have to do is 42. So the factors of 42, again we start with 1 and we write down 42 over there. 42 does go into, oh 2 does go into 42, so 2 is a factor. If I divide 42 by 2, I'm going to get 21. So I'm going to write 21 over here. And then I'm going to check the next number, which is 3. Now 3 also goes into 42. So I'm going to put 3 over there. 42 divided by 3 is 14, so that is going to go over there. Then 4 does not go into 42, so I'm going to skip over it. 5 also doesn't go into 42, so I'm going to skip that one as well. And then 6 does go into 42. If I divide 42 by 6, I will get 7. So I'm going to write over here 6 and over here 7. And then because 6 and 7 are right next to each other, um, I don't have a number in between them to check, so I am now done. So those are all the factors of 42. Right, now that you know how to find factors, it does help if we have some tips and tricks up our sleeve that we can use to determine whether or not numbers will be factors a little bit more quickly so we don't waste time trying to divide by numbers that um, we don't need to in order to try and find the other half of a factor pair. If we know that, like for instance, if I know that 2 isn't a factor, I'm not going to bother dividing by 2 to try and find the other half of the factor pair. So what we're going to use is what we call the divisibility rules. So I'm going to over here show you the divisibility rules which allow us to find out a little bit more quickly if um, some of our small numbers, the numbers from 2 to 12, are factors of the number that you're working with. Okay, so the first rule is one that you very possibly know already, and that is to find out if a number is divisible by 2. A number is divisible by 2 if the last digit is even. So if the last digit is a 0, a 2, a 4, a 6, or an 8, then we know that the number is going to be 
a multiple of 2 or it is going to be divisible by 2 or 2 will be a factor of that number. Okay, the next rule is for 3. If we want to know if 3 is a factor of a number, what we can do to quickly find that out is take all the digits in that number and add them up and see if the sum gives us a number which is a multiple of 3. So if I add up all the digits in the number and I end up with something that is a multiple of 3, then I know that the number itself was a multiple of 3 as well. The next rule that we have for 4 is to just look at the last two digits of your number and see what number they form. If they form a number which is a multiple of 4, then you don't need to worry about the rest of the number. You can just decide that it is a multiple of 4. You can know that it's a multiple of 4 based on those last two digits. Okay? Then the rule for 5 is one that you very possibly know already. That is that if the last digit is a 5 or a 0, then your number is a multiple of 5. The rule for 6 uses 2 and 3 together. If your number is even, in other words, if it's a multiple of 2, and if it is a multiple of 3, then it is going to be a multiple of 6. Now, my recommendation for this is to first check and see if it's even. If your number is not even, then you know it's not a multiple of 6, because both of these have to be true, and the quickest one to check is if it's even. So if it's even, in other words, if it's a multiple of 2, then it could possibly be a multiple of 6, then you can check if it's a multiple of 3 as well. And if it is both, then you know it's a multiple of 6. But if it's not even, it can't be a multiple of 6. So then you don't have to waste your time adding up the digits to find out if it's a multiple of 3. The rule for 7 is a little bit complicated, and honestly, I generally don't recommend using it because it actually doesn't really save you time. It's easier to just use your calculator, type the number in and divide by 7 and see if it works out to a non-decimal answer. So um, the rule is here, and you can use it if you want to. It's that the result of removing the last digit, doubling it, and then subtracting it from the leftover number is divisible by 7. But that really is rather complicated, and I don't think it's really worth the time that it takes to do it. So it's easier to just do use your calculator or even to just divide by 7 without a calculator. Then the rule for 8 is very similar to the rule for 4. For 4, you look at the last two digits. For 8, you look at the last three digits, and you see if it, the number is a multiple of 8. Now, sometimes the last three digits will be a number that you don't know if it's a multiple of 8. Then you can just use your calculator to work that out quickly. Um, but it means you don't have to type in the whole number, you can just type in those last three digits. And if the last three digits form a number that is a multiple of 8, then you know that the whole number is a multiple of 8. Then number 9 is very similar to number 3. If you want to know if a number is a multiple of 9, then just like for number 3, you add up all the digits, but this time you want to know if the sum, or the result of adding them, is a multiple of 9. And if it is, then you know that your number is a multiple of 9. The rule for 10 is one that you probably know already. That is that if you, if the last digit of your number is 0, then you know that your, your number is a multiple of 10. For 11, uh, this one is again a little bit complicated to do, but it is a useful one to know. That is that by adding the alternating digits, um, in other words, all the oddly placed digits and all the evenly placed digits, if you add them separately and then subtract what you the, the answers you get, if your answer after subtracting is either 0 or 11, then you know that your number is a multiple of 11. And I'll show you how to do that soon. And then for 12, just like for 6, we're going to use two other rules to help us to know for 12. If your number is a multiple of 3, and if it is a multiple of 4, then you know it will be a multiple of 12 as well. Okay, so those are our rules. So now let's go and actually try and use them. Okay, so here you've got a table. And in this table, you've got three different numbers, which we are going to test and see which of these numbers from 2 to 12 are factors of 
the numbers that you've been given over here. So I'm going to do the first one with you to show you how to do it and then I'm going to give you time to do the others by yourself. So for the first one, when I'm going to check if 2 is a factor, I'm just going to see if the last digit is even. In this case it is 8, so I know that 2 is going to be a factor, so I'm just going to say that is a factor over there. Then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, for 3, I'm going to add up all the digits and see if I end up with an answer that is a multiple of 3. So I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. Okay, so we've got the number 32804728. So I'm going to add 3 and 2 is 5, plus 8 is 13, plus 4 is 17, plus 7 is 24, plus 2 is 26, plus 8 is 34. So I know that I get 34 by adding all of those digits up. Now 34 is not a multiple of 3, which means that this number over here will not be a multiple of 3. Okay, so I can go over here and I can blank that out. I know that it's not going to be a multiple of 3. I can also, because I know that 3 is not a factor, any multiple of 3 will also not be a factor. So if 3 is not a factor, then I know that 6 will also not be a factor. And 9 will be, not be a factor, and 12 will not be a factor. So I can blank those out straight away. I'm not going to have to go and check that. I'm not going to have to check that. I'm not going to have to check that. Because 3 is not a factor, the multiples of 3 also can't be factors. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to 4. Now for 4, the rule is to look at the last two digits. So I'm going to look over here at the 2 and the 8 and they form the number 28. Now my rule for 4 is that if the last two digits form a number which is a multiple of 4 then my whole number will be a multiple of 4. So 28 is a multiple of 4 which means that my whole number over here 32,804,728 that whole number will also be a multiple of 4 so I can put a tick over there. Then 5 my rule is if the last digit is a 5 or a 0 that uh, then it's a multiple of 5. In this case, it's not. It's an 8, so that is not a multiple of 5, so I can blank that out. Then for 7, like I said, it's actually just quicker to use a calculator for this. So if I divide 32804728 by 7, I end up with a decimal answer. Now, because it's a decimal answer, that means that it is not a multiple of 7, so I'm just going to blank that one out as well. You can use the rule, but like I said, it's actually quicker to just use the calculator for that one. Then for 8, the rule is to look at the last three digits. So in this case, it's 728. The number that they form is 728. Now, 728 is a number that I don't know just by looking at it if it's going to be a multiple of 8. But I can use my calculator to work that out, but I don't have to type in the whole number. I can just type in 728 divided by 8 and I see that it gives me 91, which is not a decimal, which means that 728 is divisible by 8, which means that my whole number will be divisible by 8. So I can put a tick over there. Then um, 10, I could actually have put blank that out when I found out that 5 isn't a multiple of, or a factor of my number, because 10 is a multiple of 5, it means that 10 also can't be. But if you look over here, also you can see that the last digit isn't a zero, which means that 10 is not a factor. And then for 11, I want to show you how to do this one. So I'm going to um, go over here. Now for 11, my rule is that I must add the alternating digits and then subtract it and see if my answer is a zero or 11. So my alternating digits, I'm going to start off with my odd position digits. So I've got over here 3, 8, 4, and 2. So I'm going to add 3 plus 8 is 11, plus 4 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Then I'm going to add 2, 0, 7, and 8. So 2 plus 0 is 2, plus 7 is 9, plus 8 is 17. So if I subtract those, I obviously end up with 0. 
So because my answer is 0, or if it was 11, but in this case it's 0, that means that this number is a multiple of 11. So I can go over here and I can put in a tick over there. So that is how you're going to be doing this table. So what I want you to do now is I'm going to give you uh, two minutes again and you're going to fill in the rest of this table using your divisibility rules to determine whether or not the numbers, these numbers over here, uh, or these numbers over here rather, are factors of those numbers. So I'm giving you two minutes to do that. Okay, you should be done with that by now. So now let's go and look at this example over here. So my first number is 1,344,288. Now I can see straight away by looking at that last digit, which is an 8, that it is an even number. So that means that this over here is a multiple, or if the 2 is a factor of that number. Now I'm going to go and check if 3 is a factor as well by adding up the digits. So I have 1 plus 3 is 4, plus another 4 is 8, plus another 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 8 is 22, plus another 8 is 30. So the sum of all of these digits is 30. Now 30 is a multiple of 3, which means that this is, that 3 is also going to be a factor of that number. Okay, so now I know that 2 and 3 are both factors. Now let's have a look at 4. Now the rule for 4 is to look at the last two digits of the number. So in this case, it, they form the number 88. Now 88 is a multiple of 4, so that means that I can put a tick over there as well. For 5, the last digit is not a 5 or a 0, which means that 5 is not a factor of that number. For 6, I can see that 2 and 3 are both factors, and my rule is that if both 2 and 3 are factors, then 6 is a factor, so I can put a tick in there as well. For 7, I'm going to use my calculator quickly to just check it. So 1344288 divided by 7, and I get a decimal answer, which means that 7 is not a factor of that number. For 8, I'm going to go and check 288. The last three digits of the number form 288. If I divide 288 by 8, I end up with 36, which means that 8 is a factor because 288 is a multiple of 8. Then for 9, I'm going to again look at the sum of all the digits. Now, I already worked it out when I was doing 3, and I found out the sum of all those digits was 30. Now, if the sum of all the digits is a multiple of 9, 
then I know that 9 is a factor. But 30 is not a multiple of 9, so I know that 9 is not a factor. Then for 10, the last digit isn't 0, so I know that 10 is not a factor. I could have blanked it out already when I found out that 5 wasn't a factor. For 11, I'm going to check by adding up my alternating digits. So my odd digits would be 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 8 is 15. And then my even digits are 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 8 is also 15. 15 minus 15 gives me 0, which means that 11 is a factor. And then my last one, 12, I know that it's a multiple of 12 if 3 and 4 are both factors. In this case, they are, which means that I know that 12 is going to be a factor as well. So that is how I do all of it for that number over there. Now let's have a look at the second number over here, or the third number rather. Now the last digit is a 5. That is not an even number, which means that 2 is not going to be a factor. So I am going to go and blank that out. Now because I can blank out 2, that means that every single multiple of 2 also can't be a factor. So 4 can't be a factor, 6 can't be a factor, 8 can't be a factor, 10 can't be a factor, and 12 can't be a factor. So I don't have to worry about checking any of them because I know that no even number can be a factor of an odd number. It's not possible. Next I'm going to look at 3. So I'm going to add up all my digits. I have 1 plus 0 plus 4 is 5, plus 8 is 13, plus 1 is 14, plus 6 is 20, plus 2 is 22, plus 5 is 27. So the sum of all of the digits is 27. 27 is a multiple of 3, so I can put a tick in there. Then my last digit is 5, which means that my number is a multiple of 5, so I can put a tick in there as well. Then I'm going to use my calculator quickly to check for 7. So 1048165 divided by 7. And that gives me an answer which is not a decimal. So I can put a tick in for the 7 as well. Because now I know that this is a multiple of 7. Because I got a non-decimal answer. Then for 9, I'm going to check. Now when I added these all up, I found that the sum was 27. So... If I divide 27 by 9, I get 3. So 27 is a multiple of 9, which means that this whole number is also a multiple of 9. So I can put a tick in for 9 as well. Then let's check for 11. I'm going to add all my odd digits. So that's 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And here I've got 0 plus 8 is 8, plus 6 is 14, plus 7 is 19. 19 minus 8 is 11, and because it is 11, it means that 11 will be a factor, because any time that I end up with 0 or 11, 11 is going to be a factor. So that is what you should have got in that table. Right, so now that we know how to find factors, and we also have some tips or tricks that we can use to quickly identify if numbers will be factors, now we're going to use that to help us to work out what we call highest common factors. So let's have a look at highest common factors. So obviously common means the same. Highest, you know the highest means. Okay, now we know what factors are. So highest common factors, this is where you have two numbers or more numbers. And you want to find out what is the highest number, which is a factor of those numbers, which is the same. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, look at an example where we're going to determine the highest common factor, or the HCF, of 36 and 48. Now, in order to do that, the first thing I have to do is determine all the factors of 36 and 48. I can't determine the, the common factors or the highest common factor if I don't know what the factors are to start off with. So I first need to find out the factors of 36 and 48. So the factors of 36... We start with 1, and our last one is going to be 36. Then it's even, so 2 is going to be a factor. If I divide 36 by 2, I will end up with 18. 3 plus 6 is 9, so I know that 3 is going to be a factor. So I'm going to put down 3. 
36 divided by 3 is 12. 4 does go into 36, so I'm going to put a 4 over here. And 36 divided by 4 is 9, so that is going to be my factor over there. 5 does not go into 36 because the last digit is not a, a 5 or a 0. So I'm going to skip 5 and I'm going to go on to 6. And six, uh, 36 divided by 6 is 6. So I could write 6 and 6, but I don't need to write 6 twice. I can just write it down once. And now I'm done. So those are all the factors of 36. And then the factors of 48 we have actually already done. So I'm just going to write them down again. We did them in a previous question. So the factors of 48 were 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48. Okay, so now that we know what our factors are, we can go and find out which factors are common. Now, I recommend starting with the number that has fewer factors and working from there. So, first of all, I'm going to look at my first factor over here. That is 1, and it is common with the 1 over there. there are, there's a 1 in the other one in the factors of 48 as well. Okay, then 2, there is also a 2 for 48, so I'm going to underline those. 3, there is also a 3 for 48, so I'm going to underline those. 4, there's a 4 for 48 as well. 6, there's a 6 for 48 as well. 9, there is no 9 for 48, so I'm not going to underline that one. 12, there is a 12 for 48, so I can underline those. 18, there isn't, and 36, there isn't. So my highest one that was common between them is 12. So my highest common factor is going to be 12. Now I'm going to give you a couple of questions that you're going to work on. So you've got two questions. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on the first one. So that is 15 and 40. You're going to find the highest common factor for 15 and 40. So you have two minutes to do that. Okay, you should be done with that question now, so let's go through the answer. So, the first one we have is 15. We need to find the factors of 15. So, the factors of 15, we've actually already done it, so I'm just going to write them down. So, that is 1, 3, 5, and 15. We did that in a previous question. Then, the factors of 40. We start with 1, and our last factor is going to be 40. Then it's even, so 2 is also a factor, and if we divide 40 by 2, we get 20. 3 is not a factor, but 4 is a factor, so I, if I divide 40 by 4, I get 10. And 5 is a factor. 
if I divide 40 by 5, I get 8. And then 6 is not a factor and 7 is not a factor, so we are done. So now I'm going to go and compare those factors and see which ones are common. So like I said, I recommend working from your number that has the fewest factors. So I'm going to work from 15. 1 is common, so I can underline those. 3 is not common. 5 is common. And 15 is not common. So the, the highest one which was common is 5. So my highest common factor is 5. Right, so now I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on the next question. Where you're working out the highest common factor for 24 and 18. Okay, you should be done with that now, so let's have a look at the answer for that one. So for 24 and 18, first of all, we need to find the factors of 24. So we start off with 1 and 24. Then 2 is a factor because it's even. And 24 divided by 2 is 12. Then 3 is a factor because 2 plus 3 is 6. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. 4 is a factor, and 24 divided by 4 is 6. And then 5 is not a factor, so we're done. Okay, and then we have 18. So the factors of 18, we start with 1 and 18. 2 is a factor because 18 is even, so we have 9. Then 3 is a factor, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. And then 4 is not a factor, and 5 is not a factor, so we are done. So now let's go and have a look and compare them and see what is common. So here, the 18 has fewer factors, so I'm going to be working from that one. So 1 and 1 are common. 2 and 2 are common. 3 and 3 are common. 6 and 6 over here are common. 9 is not common, and 18 is not common. So 6 is the highest one that was common. So my highest common factor for question B was 6. Okay, so now we have learned about factors. Now we also need to learn about multiples. You also need to know how to find what we call the lowest common multiple. So multiples are what you get when you are skip counting or when you are multiplying a number by various other numbers. Okay, so when you're working on factors, there is a finite number of factors. You can write all the factors of a particular number. So if I ask you to write down the factors of 6, then 
you can write down all the factors of 6 and that would be 1 and 2 and 3 and 6. There are no other factors of 6. But if I ask you to write down all the multiples of 6, you could keep going forever and ever and ever because as you write down the multiples of 6, you'll go 6 and then 12 and then 18 and then 24 and 36. I mean, 30 and then 36 and you can keep on adding 6 over and over and over and over again and every time you add 6 you're getting another multiple of 6 but you could, there's no limit to the number of times that you can add 6 so there's no limit to the number of multiples of 6 so we can't find the highest common multiple of two numbers because there is no highest multiple but we can find the lowest common multiple so what we're going to do now is we're going to do an example sorry that should have been over there the lowest common multiple which is the LCM so in our example now we are going to find the lowest common multiple of 9 and 15 so we're going to start off when we are finding the lowest common multiple like I said we could carry on writing multiples forever but we're not going to write we're not going to try and write all the multiples we just need to write enough that allow us to find which what a common one Okay, so over here I'm going to start by finding the multiples of 9 and writing them down. So I'll start with the first multiple, which is just 9 times 1, which is 9. And then 9 times 2 is 18. And then 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 5 is 45. And I carry on going 54, but I don't need to keep on going forever. I can stop. I'm going to stop over there and then if I Have done multiples of 15 and I reach a point where I'm going higher than this and I still haven't found one that is common I can come back here and add more multiples until I find one that is common Okay, so now let's go and have a look at the multiples of 15 and see if we can find one that is common so I start with 15 and I, is that is 15 multiplied by 1. Then 15 times 2 is 30, so I'm added 30, or added 15 and I get 30. Add 15 again and I get 45. And now I can already see that I have a 45 over there and I have a 45 over here. So I don't need to carry on going here because I've already got a common multiple. So my LCM, my lowest common multiple, the first multiple I got to that was the same for both numbers is 45. So I'm done with that one. So now I'm going to allow you to do two questions on your own. Again, I'm going to give you two minutes for each question and then we'll go through each of them. Okay, so the first one is six and eight, where you're gonna find the lowest common multiple. Okay, you should be done with that question, so let's go through the answer. 
So for question A, we need to first find the multiples of 6. So the multiples of 6, we start with 6. Then we've got 12, then 18, and 24, and then 30. And we could continue, but I'm going to stop there for now, and we'll see if we need to come back. Then the multiples of 8. I start with 8, then I have 16, and then I have 24. And I can already see over here I've got 24 and 24, which is the same. So I can go and say my lowest common multiple. Let's just put that up there. My lowest common multiple is 24. For 6 and 8, my lowest common multiple is 24. Right, so now I'm going to give you the next question. And again, you have two minutes to work on this one. We have to find the lowest common multiple for 12 and 20. Okay, you should be done with that question. So let's go through the answer. So for question B, we had 12 and 20. We need to find the multiples of each of them. So the multiples of 12 are 12, and then 24, and then 36, and 48, and 60. And now I'm going to stop there because 60 already looks to me like it's going to also be a multiple of 20. So I'm going to go and do the multiples of 20. And I start with 20. And then I have 40, and then I have 60, and yes, I can see that 60 appears in both. It is common, and it is the lowest multiple that is common between the two. So now I know that my LCM, my lowest common multiple for 12 and 20, is 60. Okay, so that is how you find the lowest common multiple. So now you know all about factors. You know about the divisibility rules that help you to more easily identify factors and you know how to find highest common factors and lowest common multiples. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.